Welcome back to Medical Monday. We are talking about the tough topic of Alzheimer's disease, but I believe so important to talk about because more and more and more people are being diagnosed and it's a disease that needs talked about. So we have the research and the funding and hopefully one day a cure. Dr. Lucy Ledbetter is our doctor here tonight on call, so to speak, and a neurologist at Advanced Neurology and Sleep in Columbia. Taking your calls as always, and we have Rose Marie on the line. Hi, Rose Marie. Hi. Um, I've got kind of a couple of little questions, and one is, okay, when I was living in Florida, um, and um, I was doing a health, um, uh, putting together a health seminar, and I did some research on, you know, diseases, and one was Alzheimer's, and uh, about 12 years ago, Tennessee was number three in the nation for Alzheimer's, and now it is number one in the nation, and it's been in the newspapers out here. And when I moved here in 2010, I had heard that on the radio, and, and they were reading it from the newspaper, and and I went, wow. And um, and this, one of the things that I learned when I was a kid that um, – my parents taught us never to eat anything or drink anything that came from like aluminum cans, uh, cooking in aluminum pans and stuff like that because that would kind of contribute to the Alzheimer's and stuff. And and, it, and I've met more people in, since 2010, since I've been in Tennessee, that have Alzheimer's and we're in just these few years than I have through all my entire life, and, and I'm going, wow, and 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 then with the you know when you when you say it's um, you know genetic, is it possibly because of what people are eating and what they're not eating? You know, we were talking about this during break, Rosemary, so I'm glad you brought this up. Um, we'll get back to the aluminum, but let's start with the diet because we were talking about this, the Mediterranean diet, which I'm yes. going to say is probably not all too popular in this part of the world <laughs> for the most part. That's true. Uh, the Mediterranean diet is uh, the traditional diet eaten by people who live along the Mediterranean, uh, uh, people who are Greek, Italian, uh, uh, Spanish, Portuguese, and it's a uh, it, it's the healthiest diet really on Earth. Uh, people that live along the Mediterranean have the longest lifespans and the healthiest uh, compositions of anybody in the world, and they have a very uh, low incidence of dementia. Um, basically, the Mediterranean diet involves uh, very little red meat, eating very little red meat eating very little dairy, and the dairy that that is uh, consumed is typically Greek yogurt, which is low in mm -hmm. fat and high in protein, um, uh, uh, olive oil instead of butter. Um, lots of fish. Lots of fish, ocean fish, um, uh, poultry, but uh, healthy poultry and um, not farm-raised mm -hmm. poultry, and uh, fresh vegetables, fresh fruit. They have a lifestyle that involves uh, socializing, eating slowly, exercise. Uh, they, they walk typically. Um, they relax over meals, and it, it's just a whole lifestyle that leads to a healthier way of life and a healthy brain. Uh, also, maybe a glass of wine, and if, 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 if you're thinking that you don't drink alcohol, a glass of grape juice uh, mm. once a day um, is uh, it's a good antioxidant uh, and it helps uh, antioxidants are good for your brain because they're um, part of the process of developing Alzheimer's disease is an, is an inflammatory period that um, tends to destroy the brain and it, it helps prevent that. Uh, and so you're talking about inflammation within the body. We're not talking you sprain your wrist and you have a, a swelled up wrist. That's correct. Yeah, inflammation within the body but also inflammation within the brain. Mm -hmm. And so it helps uh, slow or prevent that stage. And um, also it, it keeps a person uh, typically at a normal weight. It prevents diabetes. It prevents high blood pressure and all of those things that tend to lead to uh, to Alzheimer's disease and, and dementia. Rosemary also, also mentioned um, aluminum and a lot of people think about their deodorant or the pans they're cooking in. What, what do you know about that? Well, uh, aluminum was investigated uh, probably 20, 20 or so years ago, 25 years ago, because it was noticed that 
um, people who were on dialysis tended to have a higher uh, rate of dementia, a higher rate of vascular dementia mm -hmm. and Alzheimer's disease. More than likely, however, that was due to other causes. Um, I wouldn't go out of my way to be exposed to aluminum. I got rid of all of my aluminum pans uh, way, way back. Uh, but the, as far as I know, there's no conclusive proof that there's an association between Alzheimer's disease and aluminum. Now, there is an association with smoking. Uh, cigarette smoking increases your risk of Alzheimer's disease by about 80%. Um, uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, eating sugar is pro-inflammatory and it's it's a special occasion food and not a uh, not an everyday food. As far as the Mediterranean diet, fruit is the dessert, not sugary desserts. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, that way um, the uh, Mediterranean diet is good for you in a lot of different ways. Okay, good word of advice there. Let's hop to Jane now. Jane, thank you for calling in. What's your question tonight? I have read newspaper articles recently about one of the countries saying they have a cure for Alzheimer's by some type of radiation, I believe. Mm, have you heard anything about that? Uh, there have been some recent studies that claim it's not with radiation as far as I know it was with extreme healthy lifestyle and extreme healthy diet um, will help slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease there was one report that it was cured but I'm very skeptical about that uh, I know that um, it did not the, the report that I know about did not have to do with radiation it had to do with just an extreme uh, extremely healthy lifestyle. Now the one thing I didn't mention was exercise. 20 minutes of exercise every day uh, cuts your risk of Alzheimer's disease in half and I'll mention that as well. And we don't have to go out and run a mile but no. you need to be moving to get that blood moving. Moving. Walking 20 minutes a day will decrease your risk of Alzheimer's disease by 50 percent. And simply because why? Why does that help? Well it probably helps because exercise is also associated with lower weight, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol and um, uh, probably some other things that we don't know about. I know exercise increases your level of dopamine and it may increase your level of other uh, good neurotransmitters as well. And also, you should exercise your brain. I'm glad you said that. Exercising your brain is excellent to help prevent uh, Alzheimer's disease. Um, there's a, uh, the, the uh, online or the, the app puzzles that I like mm -hmm. are Lumosity and uh, it's good to uh, practice uh, if, if, you, if you don't have a computer. Even crossword puzzles or Sudoku um, are very, very good to help preserve your brain function. And I know so. a big part of this is staying active and in a community and, and just, you know, reaching out. That's right, Carrie. Uh, having a, a social type community, people around you that care about you and support you. And if you don't have close family members, reach out to people. Mm -hmm. uh, go to a senior uh, citizen center, um, a, a church, a uh, temple, whatever, to help uh, keep people around mm -hmm. you uh, because it's not good to, uh, it's not good to be alone. It has a higher risk of dementia. Let's talk about the different types of Alzheimer's because under that dementia umbrella is Alzheimer's and then there are different types. That's correct, Carrie. Uh, under the Alzheimer's umbrella, uh, the, the big two divisions are early onset and late onset. Uh, there are three genetic forms of early onset dementia that typically um, uh, present themselves before about age 60. Uh, one of them that's uh, actually very surprising to people is Down syndrome, uh, trisomy 21, or having three number 21 chromosomes uh, oftentimes leads to Alzheimer's dementia in uh, patients who have Down syndrome uh, because it, uh, it has three copies of uh, a certain gene that uh, leads to increased plaques and tangles in the brain. Um, the, the other type is late onset, which is what most people have. It's, it's fairly rare to have early onset, um, but, but most of the time when we think of Alzheimer's disease, we're talking about late onset mm -hmm. Alzheimer's dementia, which typically presents itself uh, after about age 65. Okay, and we've talked about the signs and symptoms, and we'll go back and do that again. But I do want to get to Donna on the line. Donna, what's your question tonight? Uh, my question tonight is um, what does she feel about Alzheimer's versus uh, music as like a, a type of uh, exercise for the, the brain? And, pretty therapeutic, yeah, and therapeutic too. Yes, ma'am. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. 
Uh, music therapy, whether you're listening to good music that makes you happy or performing music especially, um, both of those are very good for the brain. They're good good exercise for the brain, but also it, it's a, a good way to uh, keep yourself happy and um, it, it's a good way to um, improve your uh, memory and thinking and help treat or prevent dementia. And I've also, I've seen different studies and stories about this too, that even when someone's been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and really far along in that journey, music can really bring up memories, help them take a step back in time and bring comfort to them as well. That's right, Carrie. Uh, music is, is a wonderful uh, uh, medium for, for any patient uh, mm -hmm. that has a neurologic condition, but especially Alzheimer's disease. Let's talk about people who have been diagnosed and um, their families too. Once you have that diagnosis, then where does your focus need to be? What happens next? Well, once uh, the diagnosis is made and once we've ruled out other causes, uh, I typically start medication that increases acetylcholine. That's the primary neurotransmitter that uh, helps memory. And um, in addition to that, I'll monitor memory. Uh, I'll do memory testing in the office about every three months or so. And then also, uh, we talked earlier about support for caregivers. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be a caregiver, and it's hard to take on the role of, uh, if, if it's your spouse, for instance, of both you and your spouse. And so I'm very sensitive to that fact, and I always look for ways to help support caregivers. But um, over time, I, I, I watch to see uh, um, how quickly or how slowly uh, memory declines and if it looks like memory is declining faster than I would expect I add additional medications and I always recommend the Mediterranean diet for patients I recommend exercise as well as possible um, and and that's that's probably the typical uh, therapeutic um, course uh, mm -hmm. of action that I that I recommend. How do you temper I'm sure the desire that comes with all families that say okay well how can we reverse this and um, there's really not a lot of options, right? There's really not a lot of options. Um, the, there are medications to treat behavioral problems, to treat depression, uh, to treat anxiety. Um, safety is an important mm -hmm. factor. And um, a lot of times you can reverse some of the behavioral problems. You can reverse uh, the, um, the depression that can go along with it. And um, it's more a matter of, of treating symptoms at that point in order to reverse the symptoms rather than reversing the disease mm -hmm. itself, gotcha. unfortunately. Yeah, that is a big unfortunate part of this yeah. disease. We're going to take another quick break. More of your calls and questions when we come back. Stay with us.